only between social movements and the states or violent groups and the states, but also between uh, social movements uh, uh, of a religious type, of a nationalist type, of a class type, of the, red, of the left and of the right. And I think that uh, looking at these uh, uh, dense interactions is something important for all these groups. None of the group I've analyzed uh, uh, developed out of nowhere, but they, they've uh, uh, developed from within uh, political organizations that had used uh, different uh, uh, repertoires of actions than the clandestine one. Uh, and which uh, uh, later on, uh, step by step, moved towards more violence. And these choices were embedded uh, in a context of very, of very intense uh, relationship. What is also important uh, for all these groups is that uh, uh, in all these groups, uh, the construction uh, of a narrative which justified violence uh, happen in action. There is very often uh, the tendency to interpret political violence as determined by a degree of legitimation of violence in deeply rooted tradition. It is true that history is mobilized by all this group to provide an image uh, which justified violence but it is also true that in most of the cases, ideology is not before the uh, choice of violence, but it is uh, uh, elaborated in order to justify it. So uh, rather than being ideologically <coughs> determined, most of these choice appeared as uh, uh, developing from the type of uh, framing of constructions of the conflicts uh, in uh, the different uh, moment by the different actors. And this was also something which uh, happened in action, following the development of a conflict which was not the deed of just one organization, but developed uh, through interactions of narratives and symbols. And finally, what I want to suggest is that uh, in order to understand the development of this type of phenomenon, one needs a sort of uh, uh, dynamic or emerging type of uh, uh, logic. Uh, I found it interesting that if the slide is the right one, uh, two very different authors working on political violence, like uh, Statis Kalivas on the one hand and Elizabeth Wood on the other hand. So Statis Kaliva using a more uh, rational choice type of approach and uh, Elizabeth Wood uh, uh, suggesting a more uh, emotionally and cognitive uh, uh, driven approach. They all uh, suggested, after very interesting analysis of their own cases, uh, the um, partially endogenous uh, uh, nature of the development of political violence. So the fact that, uh, uh, as they say, uh, civil war, uh, which is the, the type of violence they analyzed, developed on themselves, developed not uh, uh, from uh, a distant and pre-existing uh, uh, type of uh, causes, but from uh, the uh, contingent, in part underdetermined, but especially relational and constructed natures of the uh, events. As uh, uh, Statis Kalivas observed, and I think it was uh, true for all of my case, the advent of war, or the advent of clandestine political violence, one could say, transforms individual preferences, choices, behavior, and identities. And the main way in which civil war exercises its transformative functions is through violence. So what he stresses is it's not predetermined by the existing uh, individual preferences, choices, behaviors, and uh, identities, but it's something which is constructed on the way.
uh, a simple way to put it is violent produces violence. Elizabeth Wood uh, made a similar uh, point from a different perspective, looking more at political culture. And she said, political culture, <coughs> the values, norms, practices, beliefs, and collective identities of the insurgents was not fixed but evolved in response to the experiences of the conflict itself, namely previous rebellious actions, repressions, and the ongoing interpretation of events by the participants uh, themselves. So when I say dynamic approach, uh, what I mean is uh, when looking at political violence, as when looking at other phenomena, like uh, um, peaceful uh, revolutions, uh, as the one which developed with the Arab Spring, peaceful or less peaceful. Uh, a, a causal logic has to be at least corrected by an analysis of what uh, Bill Sewell uh, called eventful temporality. So out the intense moment uh, related with uh, uh, violence, uh, uh, transitions, democratization, social movements, and so on, have an effect on their own, producing and reproducing uh, narratives and emotions which fuel <coughs> violence. Sometimes building alliances, 
But very often the organizational logics of the many, many groups interacting uh, during the protest was also a logic of uh, improving uh, their own resources, their own members, membership. And this often brought about long discussions about violence, uh, but also the uh, development of uh, some groups that found a sort of uh, advantage in the use of violence, competitive advantage uh, uh, in uh, uh, offering uh, uh, solutions which was able uh, to uh, get consensus of at least some parts of these mobilized groups. So these groups developed uh, uh, on a proposal of violence as uh, an instrument to outbid uh, the other uh, groups which were active in their environments. And it also often developed through uh, emotional and 